you ever think about i mean podcasting or something as a as a, a way to have an audience i've thought about it but like I don't really know. I thought about doing like a history podcast. But ultimately, again, sort of to what we were talking about before about like transferring an audience. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many people would listen to it. And uh, I also just feel like podcast is like, what podcast could I do that someone hasn't already done? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's where kind of the personal brand comes in, where it's like, obviously, someone has always done every podcast entertainment podcast history podcast but you as a person are innately a unique outlet on perspective of whatever niche you're going down into um i'm sure that kind of colloquial history podcast exists but i mean comedy and history is a pretty good uh crossing of paths of, of niche it, it, that's how, that's usually how it happens though where obviously you have big topics because we work with podcasts a lot um you got large topics that super saturated and then there's one weird thing that makes it different that someone takes from a different experience and in, in work or just style of doing it that makes it appealing to audiences and just shilling out more content than any other people um helps too i think a comedy history podcast could work um I'm, I mean, I'm sure it is working. I'm sure, someone is. You know what I mean? Like for you, I think I, you obviously uh, it's a fun, natural, comedic podcast as uh, showing from this episode of Rick and Bomb. With Pat. You, you got me thinking about it again. <laughs> you got me. I had a whole idea that I was going to do like forgotten figures from history, like background characters, basically, who like. You know what I mean? Like, aren't someone you would know about from mainstream study of history, but like weird figures that I've like stumbled across. Yeah. Um, but just it would be hard to fucking keep that going for super long because I don't know that many of those. Yeah. You know. So what's that biggest annoyance? Because I always try to find annoyances in all things, but especially with podcasting, um, just kind of like a research consistently. For that, for that type of one, it would be research. Yeah. Interesting. Because I'd want to have like more than just me bullshitting about it. I'd want to have like some primary sources. Like basically there's one episode of that that I, I could make a killer fucking episode about this one soldier in the Spanish-American War that like he hasn't, I actually wrote it. I've, I've, I've got like half of a screenplay about him. But like, you know, I was doing a lot of research about that time period about this guy specifically. So like if that amount, if it took that amount of research for every episode, that would, that would be tough. Yeah. You know? um, so I don't know. Hmm. Something to think about. Maybe do a little less research. <laughs> yeah. And just fucking make stuff up. Just bullshit more. Do that, dude. That would be funny. It just not illegal. <laughs> Just be like one episode per year. I just completely make this person up and we see if you can tell. <laughs> you could, you could, you could do like, you do a day of research on a, a day or a week of research, do a, a weekend of research on something. But <laughs> that's actually a really good idea, bro. You do, you do a solid weekend of research on, on something. Um, and you, you produce an episode. And you mix it in with fake stuff. See if the audience knows what's fake, knows what's not. You have engagement on Instagram or something, uh, email list, website. Um, you have people call in and stuff. You do live stuff. Um, we have bullshit, have completely real, and see what people can figure out what's real or what's not. That's fun. That's a fun <laughs> idea. If you need help with it, we can help you. We got a whole production studio, but we'd like to do it remotely. Actually, I mean, homies in LA, he might be able to help, but uh, if you're interested. I'll, I'll give us some thought. Cool. Well, I'll hit you up. Cool. Maybe we do it. Cool. I think it would have to be live because if you give people too much time to look it up themselves, <laughs> it'd be easy to be like, I can't find this fucking name you're saying anywhere. But if you're doing it live, yeah, and you're yeah. like, this guy this guy, this guy, and they just had to kind of in the moment be like, do you seem like you're bullshitting? That could be yeah. fun. Do you, um, 
you know the cats from college humor that have like a new college humor thing now do you know what college humor so. is? i mean i know college humor yeah. but i don't know who specifically uh, you're talking about they they do like dungeons and dragon stuff and they have like a like a game show type of show oh okay i'm not familiar that's what popped up in my mind as well um something like that. they do a live show it's not live but um and it's super produced they're in the studio and they have a set and stuff um but it's it's kind of what i was thinking about in the realm of possible things to do um but that's a solid idea it could use like and live gets engagement as well you could flip it off into animation and stuff i like doing live stuff i do live streams on tiktok that's like a writer's room oh really or people like with tiktok live stuff it's like you can't tap into like live right away you have to be lucked into an algorithm of a live stream um click on what do you mean profile, perhaps because like i can't i don't really follow hello people on tiktok but um the only way i can from my knowledge of tiktok is i only grab a live if i'm scrolling through <clears throat> and a live stream pops up of someone already live right and i can't like check out like if they're live and it doesn't pop up in my you have stream. no way to know yeah yeah it says when i start the streams it says we're notifying your followers that you're live now hmm. maybe they have to turn that on hmm. specifically because like you i don't get a notification just by following someone on tiktok i don't get a notification if they're live it will just show up when you scroll i also follow like no people that's also the thing you could follow no people and become an audience of a creator on tiktok yeah it's crazy half of my thing, yeah i still think china might be uh 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 half attack on the u.s by taking people's attention on tiktok <laughs> well you know i buy that honestly but at the same time if they didn't do it somebody else like That's someone what... needs to create the new social media crack yeah, yeah, yeah you know that you can't look away from and they took it to the next step because before, before america had the crack but you know now China we had the crack it. and we were serving it to ourselves we were serving fiends freaking reagan you know <laughs> absolutely and we were you know any giving it to the whole world and then they yeah. came up with they came up with a pure vor version they got the you know magic. better product of that yeah. blue magic all right <laughs> and then now that's we're all hooked on that and then eventually somebody will distill a new version of it you know, probably us or them. I don't know yeah. who else is really like coming up with new social media platforms. But yeah, like the thing is, like, it doesn't even really have to be a conspiracy. It can just be that we're all fucking addicted to the dopamine hit of social media now. So, like, and they you just, know, they got the dope. They got the dope. America would rather have the dope than someone else. Right. We love we love drugs here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the whole thing. We're at Rigel. That's Rigel. <laughs> it all comes back to Rigel, dude. <laughs> <laughs> awesome man uh let's wrap it up there it's been like an hour uh thanks to oh, Juan not being on um shout out what uh what what you need to shout out if you got a you got a place people can go on the internet that they want to find you at yeah so uh at nom de coom n-o-m-d-e-c-o-o-m i'm that on tiktok i'm that on instagram uh we got a discord that sort of functions as similar to the writer's room where we fucking riff on ideas and just like shoot the shit. There's a link to that in my bio on TikTok. That's I do really the live stream. Cool. Sorry. You do live. Sorry. I'll talk about the Discord after, but you do live. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say the last thing is I do live streams every Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific time on TikTok, uh, where we do the same thing, writer's room. We do a riff on ideas and I'll just like write try to like improvise the skit as much as I can live. And then like a lot of my skits in the last several months have been shit that comes from the writer's room. You've crowdsourced content. Yeah. I have, a, I have a little, you know, I'm a, I'm a, and I'm a cruel taskmaster. Hell yeah. <laughs> Make sure they know that off top. <laughs> in the content minds, there is no mercy. Taskmaster? The UK, huh? the UK show taskmaster. No, no, I haven't seen it. I, I, the only way I know that word is because there's a UK show called taskmaster. Oh, okay. It's a solid show. Leave it to the Brits to have a show called Taskmaster. Is it, is it is that a oldish thing? I think of them as being British, as that as being a British thing. They like to tell people what to do. They used to. <laughs> so 1776, baby, ooh rah. <laughs> like
like like the Marines were there. <laughs> the Marines were there, dude. The pre-Marines, you know? That Discord thing is is a really dope idea. What did that come from the live streams or what? Yeah, people on the live streams are like, you should do a Discord. Oh man. Um, because we have like a little community, you yeah. know. The the history things, what it does, it curates a kind of high higher thinker of of like thinking about writing and like history in that same way and if you get that like 10 percent, 5 percent of people and that like maybe like 2 percent of people that do engage actively you have like similar minds of, of writing certain content that's crazy yeah no it's we've built like a little like a little community oh. you know because people who like it like you like you said it's like it's not going to be for everybody but if you're into like history or like you, you said, you find that funny, Yeah, you know, it's like now that's sort of a natural um, connection that you have with each other. And like, you're all sort of riffing on those ideas and it's a very like fun, you know, kind of fertile ground for, and the people are funny. Like people in the discord, people in the streams are very, very funny and very knowledgeable. They, they know more about history than me. They'll always be like, do this event. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I never even heard of that. And then I look it up and I'm like, that's a cool event. I don't think I know enough about it to make jokes about it. But like, you know, I'm always impressed with people's both their sense of humor and their historical knowledge. That's awesome. The the power of community and niche humor. So we're, we're living. I'm, I'm living testament to it, my friend. Awesome, Mr. Papito. Um, I appreciate you, man, for coming on. Give yeah, man. Hour. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the stock advice. <laughs> yeah. No problem. If you need any others, I can uh, tell you what I would do. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll hit you up with my full portfolio. Okay, it's not a lot better than the Rigel. I'll warn you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you old, very capitalized, boring companies to invest in for fifty years. Great. Cool. That's probably what I need at this point. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man.